The question of abortion is much wider than the termination of a pregnancy. It is a question of the entire life of the parents. As I have said before, parenthood is an enormous responsibility. It is an impossible responsibility for young people. Parenthood would force them to give up their future and condemn them to a life of hopeless drudgery, of slavery to a child's physical and financial needs. I cannot quite imagine the state of mind of a person who would wish to condemn a fellow human being to such a horror. Hatred is what they certainly project, not love for the embryos. If any among you are confused or taken in by the argument that the cells of an embryo are living human cells, remember that so are all the cells of your body, including your hair, your fingernails, and that cutting them is murder, according to this particular idea. <laughs> Their hatred is directed against human beings as such, against the mind, against reason, against ambition, against success, against love, against any value that brings happiness to human life. In compliance with the dishonesty that dominates today's intellectual field, they call themselves pro-life. But what right does anyone claim the power to dispose of the lives of others by dictating their personal choices? The only alleged justification for it is the theory of collectivism, which claims that man is the property of the state or of the tribe. But this type of propaganda is a valuable revelation of the militant mystic soul. The worship of the family is mini racism, like a crudely primitive first installment on the worship of the tribe. It places the accident of birth above a man's values and duty to the tribe above a man's right to his own life. A large number of militant mystics disapprove of childless couples. People who do not want to have children, they claim, are selfish. This is true. <laughs> Here, the word selfish is used with the proper objectivist meaning. It does not mean the conventional brute who sacrifices others to himself. It means the man of self-esteem who refuses to be a sacrificial animal and wants to live his own life for his own sake. When you bring children into the world, you sacrifice your own sovereignty and become a means to an end. The end, the primary concern, are the children. The primary right involved is not the right of an unborn child, nor of the family, nor of society, nor of God. The primary right is one which in today's public clamor on the subject, few, if any, voices have had the courage to uphold. The right of man and woman to their own life and happiness. The right not to be regarded as the means to any end. Close quote.